The Collector's Plant Fair is held in northwest Sydney every year, and this place gets packed. Everyone from the hardcore plant nerds to the weekend gardeners to the indoor plant lovers. We're all here to meet the growers and see what wild and wonderful things they have on offer. The Collector's Plant Fair has been growing strong since 2005. Nurseryman David Fripp has been pretty much involved from the start. When it started originally, it was, it was just in someone's private property. I think there were 20 stalls and it was in a paddock. And I do remember from the years gone by that we got bogged a few times. And, <laughs> but you know, you know what plant people are like. It's, it you, you go anywhere people. for plants, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And then it got, got too big, they moved it to here, which is around 200 odd stalls now. But the nice part for me is that you're seeing a whole new generation come through. So what do we have here? So these are begonias. This is what we've largely focused on this year. This particular one is one called Fabulous Tom. It's a really odd one. It's actually a cane, but it's a cane that's lying down. So it's a prostrate cane. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, so it's a really odd ball. It grows up, but it tends to grow a lot wider than it does high. So yeah. it's very good for a basket oh. and very cold tolerant. Oh, that's really handy. Yeah, so I grow this one at home, outside, summer yep. and winter, never turns a hair. This is my first time at the show. I came with my father-in-law, who's an avid gardener, and I was very keen to get a eucalyptus macrocarpa, ah. and I got it straight away. <laughs> I just latched onto it. Oh, so you've already it. put that into it. That was the first purchase. <laughs> and what have you got here? I've got two hellebores. I was very interested in the black one. So okay. one is a speckled slate colour, and another is the black. And have what you grown you hellebores before? No, I haven't. But, um, <laughs> I figured they like the cold and the wet, so moving to the Blue Mountains soon and give it a go. Perfect. Try something new. <laughs> what are you looking for at the show? I'm just looking for some plants, those I don't have. Oh, yes. Is there a lot of there? Yeah, I have a lot. There's no <laughs> room at my house, but still, like, I'm here. So, so what have you bought here? Uh, I got a few. One is this one. It's a beautiful little Viltimia. Yes, and then I have two cuttings for fishbone cactus. Oh yes. Uh, so its flower is very nice and sweet smell. So how do you grow these cuttings? You cut and then make a small piece and put in the soil. Yep. So each part will become new growth. Beautiful. So tell me about these little succulents. How cute is this little pot? Yeah, and then this succulent was really cute. It I'm a kind of obsessed with succulents. Ah, so. I see, that's why you got two. And what about this yeah. little guy? What drew you to him? I really liked this one because of the outline. Ah, I see on the leaves. Mm. Oh, that's really sweet. And are you going to buy anything else? Maybe. Probably. <laughs> You're in a succulent store. I think uh, yeah. a few things <laughs> that need to be purchased. Uh -huh. <laughs> succulents are fun to collect. And whilst they're famous for their foliage, there's some with alien-like flowers. So I love spillets. I've been growing them for probably 20 years. Wow. I've what do you been... love about them? Well, the flower. I mean, they're striking. They've got furry petals, which what? are absolutely amazing. They actually attract flies. Flies are their main pollinator. So does that mean it smells? It or... does. Right. Some of them smell like dead fish. Some smell like a dead cow. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you must be very popular with the neighbours. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> if you have a lot of them, maybe they would smell it. Yeah. They like the full sun position, well drained. Yeah. So they're a tough little plant, easy okay. to grow. Good for a little cacti or a succulent garden. And can you start them from, like, cuttings? How do you... Yes. You just break off a little piece, like this. Uh -huh. You can see sometimes they've got little roots on their nodes, and you can just lay them on the potting mix like that, and you'll find that it'll shoot roots down and it'll just grow. How cool are the stinky succulents? But now, I reckon I need something a little bit sweet. Have a look at what I found here. These are all Hoyas, and it's gonna be really hard to choose, but I think this one I'm gonna go home with. Have a look at the heart-shaped leaves with the variegation on it. It's so pretty, isn't it? Hoya is actually really easy to grow as well, but to keep this variegation, you just have to make sure that you give it plenty of sunlight. Don't put this one in the corner of the room. Otherwise, this variegation, which is all the specks here, is going to fade and will become more green. Yeah. 
And what have you got here? So we have a Lotus, which is going dormant, but it'll look nice next year. What's drawn you to the Lotus? I just love it. They've got really velvety textural leaves and beautiful flowers yes. in summer. <laughs> this big Nepenthes. Oh. How gorgeous is that? So we haven't seen this particular variety, but we thought we would add it to the collection. <laughs> <laughs> so are you really drawn to carnivorous plants? Yes. Yeah! I love them. So They're really sort of unusual. And how do you best grow them? If they do really well in a greenhouse. They love really direct sunlight. Yep. The really bright light. Never let them dry out. And a high humidity. Okay. They make them grow really big pitches. So they sound like they're quite divas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, once you find the right spot for them, you don't move it. Okay, good to know. Now, I have to see what the orchid grower is up to. It's a little frosty eye hybrid. Frosty eyes they call Dutch booties. So if you see, looks like. Oh, right, I see the little Dutch boots. Yeah. And is there a myth about orchids that you, you want to dispel? Yeah, they're not hard to grow. Most people kill orchids with kindness. <laughs> they think they need to be watered every day, they fiddle and fuss with them, and that's what kills them. Ah. Keep them moist, but not wet. Yep. Keep them in high shade and don't fiddle with them every day. <laughs> and I'm keen to check out the foliage plants popular with indoor gardeners right now, like the alocasias. This probably is my favourite of them all. This is Alocasia Red Secret. Big shiny leaves as part of the jewel Alocasia group. Oh, lovely. It's a gorgeous shine. Yeah, Do you it think is. it's going to sell like hotcakes? I think so. The way plant trends are going at the moment, things are coming in and out of fashion pretty quickly. This was actually last year's trend, I'd say. Oh, OK. But the new kid on the block is this one. Oh, you have to show. Close cousin. This is Alocasia Aslanii. It's got the pink veins. Amazing. So what's a trick to growing alocasias? I think one of the tricks with alocasias and a lot of the indoor plants is keeping them a little bit on the dry side, or at least having wet dry cycles a little bit like they get in nature. A lot of people tend to make the mistake of keeping them overly wet and they will rot. The best trick that we use at our nursery is just to lift up the plant and you'll soon get to know what a heavy pot is and what a light pot is. So if the pot's gone a bit light, give yep. it a drink. Great, too easy. And in amongst all the flowers and foliage, I found a friend. Fancy seeing you here. Tammy, it's, it's a plant <laughs> fair. I can't help myself. Saturday, Sunday, doesn't matter. Any day, I'm here. <laughs> and what are you looking for? Well, I came across this, which is a crocodile fern. Yes. And I bought it because I picked up one from my local nursery that was on death row. On oh, the, the, the clearance rack? Yeah, yep. exactly. And I took it home. I put it in the bathroom, north facing, nice and warm. And it slowly came back over six months and now it's about like this. And the reason I like this one is look at the pattern. Oh, it's like scales. Yeah, so I want it and I'm going to put it next to the other one. Oh, so like a little sister plant. Family, crocodile family <laughs> on, on my windowsill. Brilliant. <laughs> and while Costa's collecting ferns, I'm curious about Ripsalis. They grow on trees in tropical jungles but they grow equally as well in a basket. Justine, I can see we've got a lot of Ripsalis here. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Yes, very easy to grow plants. They tolerate sun, but morning sun. Afternoon sun's a little bit too hot. Okay. So you can water them about once a week, but it needs to be free draining. They don't like to be kept wet. And can you tell, you pointed to this one here. What's this yeah. one? This is Ripsalis campos portuana, one of the most popular ones. And this guy looks so unusual. What is he? That's Lepismium hulettianum. So in the same family, they get beautiful yellow flowers down the stem. That's very cool. Yes, and then you've got your hairy ones. <laughs> so that's <laughs> another Ripsalis. That. That's yeah. Horrida. Horrida. <laughs> Horrida. It will tolerate more sun than, say, the Campus portuana. So I can see there's a lot of variety here and there they're is. all quite collectible. They yeah. are, they're beautiful things. No, they're great plants. As with all collectors, you're always after something really weird. Yes. As most people know, I have a, a, an unbridled passion for, for Jesneriads, so the African violet family. So in that vein, we've got this guy. That's Nematanthus wheeleri. It's got very fleshy but furry leaves. And in spring, it gets a white, waxy flower with red spots in it. 
It's the first time I've had it for sale. Yep. Unfortunately, no one shares my passion so far, but I'm waiting for people to work it out. <laughs> Is it easy to grow? Being an epiphyte, it, we like to grow it in a really open mix. I'll give you a look. Ooh. So you can see there, the mix is falling off in my hands. It's got a really fine root system, so it needs a lot of air around it. So that's yep. why we grow it in a cactus mix. Being in the African violet family, do we need to worry about you know watering, not getting water on the leaves or anything particular about this one? This one's pretty good. African violets, as a rule, you can't water the leaves, they mark and a lot of the Jesneriads do do that. Yeah. A good plant, <laughs> worth having in your collection. Okay, so I didn't come here for this plant, but I'm definitely going home with it now. It's been a great day. I'm going home with lots of treasures, probably a little bit more than I bargained for, but I can't wait to get them home to see how they grow.